last lesson we covered the key idea behind factoring and why we want to do it and how we use factoring to help us solve equations. Now, we haven't talked about why we're interested in solving these equations, um, which you might not be, but you can do them anyway. Uh, but we have established why factoring is, is important in that. And the key idea was uh, not that, let's try that again, uh, that if you have two things and they're multiplied together and the product is zero, then either the first factor is zero or the second factor is zero or, or both, and you have to, you have to establish that. Uh, and I walked you through the steps. So if you missed that lesson, I mean, you need to go back and watch it because that lesson explains the reasoning, the steps, why the steps look the way we do. And I give you this nice long example problem that you can copy and not on your test, but <coughs> on your homework, you can um, reference that, ex that example. What I want to do in this lesson is go through a couple more examples of, of things that might look a little bit different. Um, so that you'll, you'll recognize them, you're not going to be thrown off by them, and maybe some variations on the problems. So the first example is this one. It's 5x squared equals negative 10x. Now first you want to recognize that this is a quadratic. Um, it's a quadratic equation. So we know it's a quadratic because of the x squared. We know it's an equation because of the equal sign. And we are being asked to solve it. And remember what solving it means. Solving means finding the values of the variables that make the equation true. If you stop after the factoring, you have not solved it. Uh, so make sure that you understand the directions. Step number one in solving a quadratic is to get everything on one side, or as we would say in math lingo, set it equal to zero. I strongly recommend that you keep the five positive. If the five is negative, I would want you to add it to both sides because we want that leading coefficient to be positive if we're factoring. To do this, we'll add 10x to both sides. And that will give us 5x squared plus 10x equals 0. Step 2 is factor using any strategy. The first thing we need to check for when we're factoring is to look for a GCF. Okay, now there's not always a GCF. But if there is one, we need to factor it out first. And there's actually, um, well, let's let's do a, like, a little quick review. Kind of like dumping out the candy here, okay? And we got 10 factors into 2 times 5. And you can see that we have common factors of 5 and x. So the GCF is 5x. And I am left with x plus 2. So that one did not involve slide and divide. It did not involve factoring a trinomial. That one was just a GCF. And really with your factoring, like factoring problems can look different all the time, which is why you, you want to memorize kind of the strategy, not a set of steps. Like you want to know what you need to look for and then engage that particular skill, recognizing that not every single problem is going to call on every single skill that you have. Once you have um, the the expression factored, now we kick in the zero product property. And I'm going to go through um, a little bit of kind of dancing around this for you just bear with me because I want to make sure it's all clear. Um, you can think of this two ways. You can think of it as a factor of 5x and a factor of x plus 2. Some of you would think of it as a factor of 5, a factor of x, and a factor of x plus 2. One of those factors has to be a zero. So one of the ways that you can do this out is you can say, well, the first factor could be zero, the second factor could be zero, or the third factor could be zero. Um, but the moment I write that, hopefully something stands out to you. It's like, Ms. Taylor, that was a really stupid thing to write. Why did you do it? Um, and that's with the five equals zero, because that's clearly not true um, and not something that you, you would need to write. So you could just write x is equal to 0 or x plus 2 is equal to 0 because even though the 5 is a factor, there's no way the 5 could be a 0. Um, the other way that a lot of people will look at it is they'll kind of lump the 5x together because they're outside the parentheses and then they'll have the factor of x plus 2. If you do it that way, you would divide both sides by 5 
And if you have zero or something and you divide it five ways, you still have nothing. Um, and notice that this brings us right back to the x equals zero, which you can get the other way as well. You just like toss out the five equals zero. I don't care how you write it out. I mean, both ways are totally fine. Just so whatever your preference is. Uh, in the other equation, we're going to subtract two from both sides and get x is negative two. And there are our two answers. So we have x is equal to zero and x is equal to negative two. Uh, if you wanted to do a check, okay, this is our check. Uh, 5 times 0 squared equals negative 10 times 0. So 0 equals 0. Everybody happy with that? And then we could plug in negative 2. And that would be 5 times negative 2 all squared equals negative 10 times negative 2. Negative 2 squared is positive 4. And then 5 times 4 is 20. And negative 10 times negative 2 is 20. And so that one checks as well. Again, I don't recommend that you spend lots of time, check, lots of time checking your work. Because it is long and tedious and usually not worth it. But you should at least know how to check it if you decided to. Now, I want to address one thing about this particular problem before I go on to the next one. Because somebody who is thinking outside the box, okay... And thinking of alternative ways to do this might come up with this idea. They might say, could you divide both sides by 5? Sure. Because remember the golden rule of solving equations. Whatever you do to one side, you do to the other side. So you could write this as x squared equals negative 2x. Um, and then they might say, well, could you divide both sides by x? Now this is where you get into kind of hot water. I want you to watch what happens, okay? Just here. I'm going to do like watch out because I don't want anybody to think this is really okay to do. Um, if you cancel some stuff out, um, so you cancel out, well, like one of the x's like so, you'd get x equals negative 2 and you're like, well, that's great. x equals negative 2, that matches what we got over here. Except that over here we got two answers, we got the x is zero, and if you try to solve it this way, you only get one answer. You lost the answer x equals zero. It just is no longer in the problem. Um, the reason why that happens is because uh, you divided by x, and the only number that you're not allowed to divide by is zero. So um, if you recall, okay, I like pause the video, so I don't know when I paused it. Um, if you divide by zero, that is undefined. And so the moment you divided by x, you were assuming that x was not zero um, because you couldn't divide by zero anyway. And so you lose a solution. So if you thought about doing something like that, first, I want to applaud your creativity. I want to applaud that you're looking at the problems. You're thinking about the things you know. You're trying to draw in other knowledge and skills because it is a logical thing to do and it can work out. You just have to know <coughs> that X could be zero and you'd have to add the X equals zero as a solution when you're done. Um, I don't recommend doing it that way because a lot of people will, will forget that and they'll, they'll just lose the other solution. So, um, so there you go. Let's look at another example. And you say to yourself, Miss Taylor, you're going crazy. Well, like the, you guys have had me for a couple months now, you know, I'm not the most normal person. Uh, I can teach math, so there you go. Um, the title of the lesson is Solving Quadratics. And then we look over here, and you're like, Miss Taylor, that's not a quadratic, because quadratics have x squareds in them, and this has an x cubed. And you would be completely correct. This is not a quadratic equation. This is a cubic equation, so why would I do this to you? Um, because I want you to see how your knowledge extends outside of um, just like the limited things that sometimes it's presented because math is consistent and the rules hold. And the rules don't change just because you've gone from a quadratic into a cubic. This is called a higher order polynomial. You actually know everything you need to know to be able to solve this equation, even though I have never actually presented an equation like this to you before. So um, let's like take it one step at a time. First step was set it equal to zero. 
Okay. And if you do it for quadratics, you know, we're going to keep that method for other types of equations. Second step was factor by any means. And you do have the tools in your toolbox to be able to factor this because we know we're going to look for a GCF first. And if I look at this, I can tell I have a, a three X's here and one X here so I can factor out an X. If I have three X's and I take one out, I'm left with two. And then I have a nine X and I take the X out and I'm left with nine. What this does is turn it into a quadratic. And uh, this is just a great review. Um, we, in this lesson, if you notice in this lesson, um, well, I guess, cause I've split the lessons because of um, the seven block day, but like we reviewed slide and divide, uh, we reviewed greatest common factor, and now we're reviewing the difference of squares. So I'm trying to keep like rolling that review of factoring into the lessons to try to keep it fresh. In the difference of squares, remember you have difference is subtraction, and then you have perfect squares, you have x times x, and you have three times three. And that will factor into the very important vocab word, conjugates. That's a G, mm -hmm. conjugates, uh, and that would be uh, X and three, and then one of them's plus and one of them's minus, and then don't forget this X out here, okay? Uh, now, third step was apply the zero product property, and so I mentioned in the last lesson with the zero product property that you've got, um, when you have things multiplied together and the product is zero, at least one of these has to be a zero. So I've got three factors. I have a factor of x, a factor of x plus 3, and a factor of x minus 3. x could be 0, x plus 3 could be 0, and x minus 3 could be 0. So that zero product property still holds because math is so good like that. It's just the principles still hold. So learn the principles and you won't go astray. Uh, now we'll... Solve each of these, uh, subtract 3, and uh, this one you'd add 3, and so x is equal to negative 3, and x is equal to 3. I do want you to notice something, too, uh, that'll be important like in a little bit. If you have a plus 3 in the parentheses, the answer that goes with it is a minus 3. If you have a minus 3 in the parentheses, the answer that goes with it is a positive 3. So just, it's not a coincidence. It's actually a pretty important fact there. So this one has three answers. Now, think like just kind of think about this, like think about the problem. Someone is probably thinking, hmm, Ms. Taylor, when we had linear equations, we would get one answer. And then we have a quadratic, the exponent is a two, and we can get two answers. And then we have an exponent of three, and we get three answers. And you might think to yourself, is that a coincidence? No, it is not a coincidence. Um, so here's the, the fact that goes with that. The highest exponent tells you the maximum number of real answers you can get. So if the highest exponent is a 1, then you have at most one real answer. If the maximum exponent is 2, you have at most two real answers. If the maximum exponent is three, you have at most three real answers. Um, so if you had an equation and the highest exponent was a five, you could have up to five answers, but not more than five answers. Uh, and then notice I'm throwing the word real in there, and that's because sometimes the answers might not be real, but they would have, um, like it does have three answers, just they might not all be real. So what's left is for you guys to practice. So you've seen um, me do some out. Uh, you've seen some examples. We talked about the different cases that you could see. We reviewed all the factoring, and now you just need to do it out. And here are the four um, practice problems. So we have x squared minus 9x plus 18 x squared minus 10x plus 25 equals 0. Sorry, I didn't read the equals 0 on the first one. Uh, 3x squared plus, uh, equal, oh my gosh, I can't read them, uh, equals 16x plus 12, and 6x squared plus 4x equals 0. Uh, so we will stop the video at this point so that you can um, go ahead and work those out. 
and I'll put the answers on the next slide for those that are following along at home. And here are the answers. Um, the first one, you should have gotten x equals 6 and x equals 3. The second one, you should have um, basically the same answer twice. So you should have gotten x equals 5 and then another x equals 5. Um, but really, like once 5 is an answer, 5 is an answer. It's not like there's two 5s on the number line. Um, there's only one number 5. So that, that's one that has like one answer that comes up twice. Um, next one was x equals 6 and x equals negative 2 thirds. And I think the last one is x equals 0 and x equals negative 2 thirds. But I like started second guessing myself doing these. So I did them kind of fast. <laughs> so if you think I've done something wrong, um, please let me know.